Welcome back to another video. Um, as you guys can tell by the title, today we're talking about week three of Air Force Boot Camp, my experience. Um, yeah, I know it's been a long time since y'all see me, but don't worry, we're back on schedule now. So make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and turn on post notices on so y'all will be notified every time I post a video. Uh, before we get into the video, these are my opinion and not those of the Air Force. Without further ado, let's get into it. So first, uh, again, this is week three. So my week three started at June 15th. And uh, so I'm going to go over this one time for that throughout this video. Um, unless I say otherwise. But every morning we're waking up at like five i think 5 30 maybe and uh you head down for pt and then you eat breakfast and then your day rolls however else your day goes but for the most part every day you're doing pt breakfast and then whatever else y'all have scheduled usually it's like go shower and then time for class and class is like hours and hours long but we'll get into that as we keep going with these videos so on June 15th, I got my first letter. This is week three. Um, it did not take this long for a lot of other recruits. Um, it just took me that long to get my first letter. But yeah, um, definitely shed some tears. That first letter, I feel like everybody sheds tears on that first letter. It's just like, that's your first letter, you know? But yeah, um, the AC broke in our dorms on this day. So we had no air really like it was so hot like 70 our dorm was such like 75 degrees every day probably higher but somewhere around there and um they did end up like putting a fan up in each bay so two fans and there's 25 people in each bay so it didn't really help that much but it did like get some air circulating in there and then we also put if y'all go y'all know unless they don't use these anymore but there's these like blue fans that they put in the showers after we shower to like dry the showers out. But yeah, we use that to go to sleep. Horrible. But yeah, it was like super, super hot. Um, it got fixed like last week of boot camp. So yeah. And then uh, the classroom. So you're gonna have a class. Each class is like 30 minutes, no longer than an hour. But that's like each class, okay? So, let me see how I can explain this. That's like each topic. But you're going to still be in that classroom for every single topic. And you're going to have at least three or four topics a day. Every class, okay? Like, every class. And it's our classrooms, at least my flight and then one other flight. We didn't have no air conditioning at all. Like, it was so, so hot. And, like, you're already tired. But, like, you know, the heat just brings you down even more so like we're drowsy and then we would like eat and then go back to the classroom so now you got the itis and you like you know you're really really tired but like i said in previous videos some of the topics were interesting some of them weren't uh at times like you're gonna have to force yourself to stay awake like i said this before but i took notes didn't write letters but yeah um that's pretty much it like i said some of the topics were good some of the topics were bad the instructors sometimes they made it fun sometimes they didn't most of the time if the instructor was an nti because they do teach some of the classes so if an instructor was an nti it was not a good class okay but if they were like um civilians or ex-military most of the time those classes will be fun are not fun but like just more easy to stay awake um all right next day we got june 16th so june 16th i got put in quarantine with my wingman um she had covid she had tested positive for covid so she everywhere you go you have to have a wingman so i had to be her wingman for her second day in quarantine i think uh it wasn't her first day somebody else was her quarantine partner but she had to come back because she had an appointment so I had to switch her out and I became a quarantine partner. But honestly, at first I was a little upset, but in the end, I didn't mind it at all. Like that was my girl, that was my friend. So <laughs> we were just talking and getting to know each other on like a way deeper level. And now we look back at it and laugh like all the time. Like it actually brought us really close. 
um oh and we did get phone calls while we were in quarantine because as you guys know or probably should know your first week you get a phone call third week you get a phone t phone call and then graduation week so third week we got that phone call but we were in quarantine so our sergeant brought our phones to us and we just called in there and yeah we got like 15 minutes but we got like an extra five minutes because he had to come back up there to get our phones from us so we had it for about 20 minutes but yeah that was that um also <coughs> There was food poisoning going around uh, in the dorms. I think it was like from the chicken. So like they had to do a big like, like they called everybody over the intercom. They called all the flights down to the, what's that thing called? Under the atrium, they called all the flights under there and um, were like, if you ate the chicken in the cafeteria yesterday, take a knee and it was like almost everybody i didn't eat the chicken because the chicken is always dry so that first time i tried the chicken i was like never eating it again so i didn't really eat the chicken ever so um i didn't take a knee but a lot of people did so they had to like we were using plastic plates and plastic silverware for like the whole week <coughs> excuse me excuse me but yeah we're really using uh plastic plates silverware cups everything for that whole week until I guess they were like washing everything out, make sure everything was good. At this point in my dorms, three people had got recycled. Um, I would say I think one for COVID, one just was falling back, like was not keeping up, you know, all that good stuff. And then another one, she went to like, uh, okay, she wasn't doing nothing in our dorms. Like she wasn't putting in no work. She wasn't doing her what's the thing called her chores or whatever so she got booted um but she wanted to get she wanted to get out i don't know if she ever got out i never heard um uh, like from her again we got june 17th this is like when i started feeling a difference like i started just feeling stronger both physically and mentally like if y'all know me well before military prior military i was like the biggest cry baby in the world like i cried over the slightest things i don't know i was just very very emotional and i wasn't scared to hide it when i had an attitude when i was sad when i didn't agree like all that i was like a big cry baby or just was not scared to uh, show my emotions but joining the military or at least nah joining the military in general that my out the door okay no more crying no more showing face none of that made me stronger both physically and men what both physically and mentally and i can honestly say probably spiritually too because i really just uh tuned in with god and just leaned on him more um during that time so june 18 we had fest so fest is basically you're practicing like your security and your gun movement or weapon stuff so basically like there's gonna be different tactics different skills different uh different type of things for security wise and i'm not gonna say them just because you know i say that but you're gonna learn like different things you're gonna learn codes you're gonna learn how to greet somebody you know what I'm saying? All the correct ways that they want you to, but you do have to pass it. So there's gonna be like professionals there at each post and you're gonna practice and practice. And then at the end, they're gonna be like, all right, boom, this is time for your test. And you get tested on each, each thing. And I think there's like three different ways on how to go about doing a certain thing. But yeah, that was pretty cool. Um, June 19th. I don't have nothing for this day, but I'm pretty sure it was just like a wake up, PT, breakfast, school, lunch, drill, you know, RLAs, which is your recruit living area. So I don't think I touched on this in any previous video. So RLA stands for recruit living area and it's basically just where you tidy up your area specifically. So you have your, your, you have your locker, your bed, 
your shoes and i think that's it um but basically you're just folding your clothes cutting off strings making sure everything is labeled washed clean hanged up properly uh put into your drawers properly and i think that's it but yeah so you're just focusing on getting your locker ready um, and this is kind of like a every other day type of thing, especially towards the end of boot camp because you're having a lot of free time. <clears throat> but that also means that there are a lot of inspections, like random inspections. So make sure you guys are, you know, preparing for that, you know, staying clean and stuff. All right. And then we got June 20th, a very special date. <laughs> but nah, uh, we have the gas chamber. So I'm gonna run through this whole day. Basically, you wake up. Mm, it wasn't a little overhead announcement. We already knew we were going to do this this day, so it wasn't like a, ah, uh, you know, like they prepped us. Well, not prepped us, but they already told us, okay, y'all, this week y'all have this, this, and this, and this, and this, and that. So we knew it was coming, but you're never like really fully prepared. You know what I'm saying? So when we woke up, I don't think we did PT this day. I think we headed over there like super, super early because once you get there, you have to sit in this big room and you have to get briefed. They're going to talk you through everything. They're going to show you videos and pictures, tell you what to do, what not to do, how to screw yourself over, how not to screw yourself over and stuff like that. Um, what else? So yeah, it's a long, long, long process. Like you're going to be falling asleep, but after the briefing that's when you're gonna like they're gonna push you into groups and i think it goes by your flight but i'm not really sure and they're gonna give you one person and y'all are all gonna go to level mach one or is it level one i don't know phase one phase two phase three i think there's phase four but i don't know it's either three or four phases of getting dressed so phase one this is not correct it's been a long time since i've done this but i'm just giving you an example Phase one would be like just your pants and your boots. Phase two would be like your pants, your shirt, and your boots. Phase three, and it would just like progress and progress. And the end would just have your full mask on with everything. So you're going to practice doing that. Um, you're also going to get like canteens and you're going to fill them with water. Nasty water. Okay, like really, really nasty water. And it's hot out there. Like that, that water... When you're ready to drink it, it's going to feel like it's boiling. <laughs> Literally, it's that hot. Like, you might burn the tongue. But, yeah. So, you're going to do that. And then, you're going to head out to the chamber. There's going to be, like, two trailers. You're going to get... There's usually four flights everywhere you go. Or, like, the big places where you go. So, they're going to split you into two flights this way, two flights that way. And there's two trailers. And y'all going to get split from your two flights to 20 people okay so then you're gonna head in they're gonna line you up and then a person's gonna go down the road and they're just gonna check Julia your mask they're gonna be like can you feel this can you feel that can you smell this can you smell that and they're just gonna make sure you're all good and tight like they're not gonna send you in there you know what i'm saying like not mask up or whatever and if your mask doesn't fit properly please say something like literally say something because you don't want to set yourself up for failure don't be scared to talk because you're just gonna hurt yourself even more but yeah so you just get masked up they're gonna make sure so boom then you're gonna head in and i was at the rest group so it was already like foggy in there but again because you had that gas mask on you couldn't smell nothing you wasn't breathing nothing in so you're good so i'm on this side of the wall and there's there's 10 people on this side of the wall 10 people on that side of the wall this side went first so i'm watching these people people actively go through it right so he's like he's making the chamber he's explaining what you need to do so you're gonna need to state your reported statement okay that's what you need to say while you're experiencing the gas chamber right so he's gonna be like unbuckle this side boom you're still good you can't really breathe you're not really breathing it in you don't smell it none of that then he's gonna say unbuckle this side and you're still good and then pull it up i think yeah i think you pull it off something like that but either way once that third step come you're dying <laughs> not literally but like yeah and for my group the 10 people that were in front of me 
there's this one guy and he said unbuckle this side right so the dude like unbuckles both sides and take the mac takes the mask off and now he has to suffer through while the guy still explains the next step and everybody's just like oh my and he's dying like he's like oh his face is red like he is dying. he's about to fall on the ground and he's still the guy that's um the instructor he's still just going through the steps like okay i'm looking this side and when you take this off he's like taking his time but literally before we went in they taught us to make sure you're paying attention to each step so please pay attention to each step and i was just looking at him like damn dude what are you doing like you just did that to yourself yikes but yeah so then it was my side's turn so you know what i'm saying did a little steps a little one two and you take that mask off i was like sergeant <laughs> everybody dead done literally like coughing my lungs out okay my eyes were burning my face was low-key burning like it was just so bad you're in there for like 15 seconds though mm, 20 i don't know however long right so then you leave out and it's like that air that fresh air makes it worse like i don't know what it is it just feels like it's making it worse so you go outside and you have to hold your arms out in a t with your mask in one hand and if you keep letting your arms down she's gonna yell at you she's gonna be like i'm gonna make you do it again da -da 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 -da. yeah so hold your arms out but yeah excuse me so that's that once it passes though, like you're so thankful. Like that once it's over, it's over. Like you're gonna walk down that street coughing a little bit more, but you're good. Once you're out of there, you're good, bro. Um, so we did have to eat MREs that day. We did have to eat MREs that day. Was it MREs or Totem? I think they were MREs. And you know, the usual thing when you eat MREs, everybody's swapping food, trading food and stuff. Um and we kind of like that was like a little bit of freedom after that because we had to wait for the bus so we were eating there you know asking the people questions normal things that chinese do but yeah um this was like every time we had to do something we were like kind of excited or ready for it just because it was that time to get out of the dorms and get off of our like little base even though we were still on base it was just like to get off of that you know and it just it felt good honestly and also because like rmti's weren't there so it was like a little bit of free time a little bit of time to just you know chill right um riding the bus was like i don't know it was like really relaxing i fell asleep every time i got on the bus i don't know something about that like that is movement that calmness plus everybody was like super tired after that so it was just like it was just falling asleep so fast but every time we went somewhere that was like too far to walk like sometimes it would be off base i think one time it was and yeah we were just not okay um and then this day too we also found out that we were in the lead for commander's excellence so i don't know if i said this in a previous video but our flight was literally outside every day putting in work like our mti he was like we were literally marched around every like all day all day every day if we was waiting to go into defect we were marching if we were waiting for other flights to come downstairs we were marching like everywhere and honestly like i'm a competitive person so i didn't mind putting in that work so we can get commander's excellence but some days it would just be so tiring knowing that and upsetting knowing that other flights were inside in the air conditioning chilling whether they're not chilling or not, or doing RLA, it don't matter. They was inside. It was just like, dang, bro, why we gotta be out here? But it was kind of cool too, cause that was my favorite thing to do, which is drill. Um, so like, I didn't mind it too too much, but yeah. All right, and then last day, June twenty first, we had OCP inspection. So, boom, when you hear that fallout, you already know it's it's coming. But anyways, so um when learning inspections it takes a long time to learn how to do it and i don't know also because our sergeant was like a perfectionist um which again didn't mind it but 
like literally broke down everything or like repeated steps over and over again like when you gotta do that this right here whoa y'all are gonna be burning boy okay but yeah so um we like perfected the inspections so that way when it's time just look at our uniforms and boom we're good because they're not only grading you on how you look but how you execute the the drill movements you know what i'm saying so yeah and this is like like i don't know this matters a lot like you don't want to fail your ocp inspections like you when you have your r late time use that time because you're always going to find a strain like even if you think you got everything right before inspection somebody gonna find a strain on your shoulder and be like hey you pay with cut that off boom you cut it off right so just make sure you're taking that time to make sure you you ready you clean you ready for inspections you know um and then also these are like my my boots would like leave like little bruises on my legs and it would hurt so bad like at the right like at the bottom of my calf it would leave like little bruises from tying it so tight like i would like it would burn when i got in the shower because of the hot water or like when i'm rubbing and cleaning it it was so bad but that kind of passed like once i got used to it for real but yeah it left bad bruises um let me see there's not really much left that's pretty much it for week three um like i always say you're still getting yelled at you're still you know doing your your uh chores um you're still a recruit like you're doing things every day getting judged every day you're getting in trouble even if you're not supposed to be in the trouble um but you also have your memory work which i forgot to talk about in my uh previous videos but your memory work is going to be like a sheet of paper it's going to have the airman's creed it's going to have the song it's going to have ranks which took so long to learn for no reason like now that i know i'm like but that was so easy but you don't know the stuff you know what i'm saying like i don't know you know so much more once you're like active for real in the real world in the operational world rather than just coming in so that's to be expected if it takes you a little minute unless you already know when you come in do that i definitely recommend because every time they will pull me to the side i thought they were about to ask me to a question about the memory work i was not about to know but yeah so make sure you just practice your memory work every time you get a chance because during it's like starting fourth week these are like when they're pulling you out make sure you know your stuff they want to make sure that you're prepared for any and everything you know um so yeah memory work and i think that's pretty much it yeah and class like class is like i didn't even know before i left i didn't even know school was a thing in boot camp like i didn't even know you were going to school you're gonna be sitting in a classroom reading listening you know what i'm saying so remember that that's a big part just because you didn't know and yeah I think that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe. Make sure you guys share. You know, if you know anybody that's going to the military, um, turn on your post notifications so y'all know every time I post a video because videos is coming, y'all. But yeah, um, I'll see y'all in the next one.